And what I do is make the sound move by using the sampler and just phasing it. Take it out. I can mix in a voice then. And then I'm introducing these strings to give it a kind of melancholy lilt to it. I never trained as a musician. I always feel like a, an outsider come onto the inside and somehow broken into a system. And so I'm a composer in the sense that I write pieces of music and use string sounds and try and produce these very melancholic, rich, ornate pieces that move people in some way. At the same time, I think I'm a kind of, I'd say like I'm an artist, a kind of entrepreneur that moves between the different genres because I, I work with sound, but I also work with voices, I work with literature and work with text and so on. So if I call myself a composer, maybe it limits the parameters just slightly for me. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Don't, I'm fine. It's an invasion of privacy in some sense, but I have a certain morality. My, re my morality stops and starts at a certain point. Stressful. I've always thought that if people don't actually enjoy the stuff I do, they maybe like the ideas or hear with me speaking, they maybe can appreciate some of the, the, the concepts I'm talking about. And I've always been very much an ideas-based person. The work I've liked by other artists, be they visual artists or writers or musicians, has always been from an ideas basis, whether at the end of the day, I like the work or appreciate it or enjoy it. It's another sort of matter, I think. All right, listen, I just had this strangest fucking call from Bonesy saying that um, he's got the keys for Nottingham Place. Jane can't find a girl. She's given him the keys and said, sort out a girl. And he goes, oh, you're a great girl. What really warms my heart is hearing people have conversations sometimes saying things like, I love you, I love you, now you put the phone down, now you put the phone down. And there's a point which you can really empathise with, there's a point where you realise that whether you admit it or not, you've been in that situation, you know, and I think that's a really important element to remember, that no matter how famous you are or how ordinary you feel, we are all essentially just human beings in exactly the same situations. And it's this point of vulnerability between two individuals that's really fascinating, I think. No, because I'm getting there now. What do you think I'm doing? You're so stupid. What the, what's the point of that? My work relates to the area I'm in. I live in London, so I produce kind of urban soundtracks, a kind of urban myth, you know, an urban mythological approach to like the kind of sound that surrounds me. And so when I travel abroad, if I'm in New York, the work I do there is a kind of map of that local area, it's that kind of city. So I'm using the dialect not only of individuals speaking to each other, as in human voices, but also the sound of like street, you know, the things when you cross the road, those kind of did 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 the green man. They all have different sounds all over the world, all over Europe and America. I like to use the sound, you know, police cars make different noises in every city and so on. And that's a dialect that you forget sometimes or fail to remember that it's individual to each territory you're in. <laughs> It's never really a problem with performing live. I usually improvise quite a lot. I take along a very minimal setup that fits into one silver suitcase, basically, and I do like a live improvisation usually. I mean, the, the most boring thing with live electronic music is nothing happens except it's usually, usually a bald man stands there and goes like this and plays on a keyboard. That's not very exciting dynamically to see, so I usually feel really embarrassed on the stage. So I usually try and hide at the side so no one can actually see me and show a film of some sort, you know, to make it a bit more interesting. But I like the chance factor, the random factor of performing live. You never know what you're going to pick up. You never know how a voice or a particular sound might change the way you structure a set and so on. <laughs> 